Both the number and the percentage of people without health insurance in the United States continues to increase, with some 47 million individuals estimated to lack comprehensive insurance coverage. As a nation, we spend twice per capita what other industrialized nations spend on health care, but we rank 19th out of 19 countries on mortality amenable to medical care. Last year, the Commonwealth's the Commonwealth Fund's update on comparative performance of American health care found that among six industrialized nations, the U.S. ranks last, failing to achieve better health outcomes than other countries and last on dimensions of access to care, patient safety, health care efficiency, and equity. There are wide and growing variations in health care outlays across the United States with no relationship, no apparent relationship, between quality and health outcomes. Disparities in health care quality and access aren't getting smaller, they're growing. We've got to be the agents of change. Driven by a mission to promote quality, cost-effective, and accessible health care for all members of the AAPA, our Academy can and must be advocates for change in our current health care system. Over the course of your time at the Sears Conference, you're going to begin to be introduced to efforts by the Academy that will urge you as PAs to be active participants in the current election process. I don't know if they have the button up there, but I've got mine on and I hope you have yours on. Our button reads, PAs for a Healthy America, Vote for 2008. Change starts with your participation. We uh, look forward to providing you in the weeks and months ahead uh, resources that will be helpful to you to become involved in the election process, to become informed of the candidates' positions on health care, health care reform, health care access, things that we all value and care about deeply. As you check your email at the message center over the next couple of days, you're going to be invited, actually you'll be required before you can get to your email, to take a quick survey that we've put together that will ask you to weigh in and provide us some insight on what you identify as the biggest challenges facing the nation in terms of health care and health care system reform. Secondly, we'd like to hear from you about what we can do as an academy, what kind of tools, materials, and support we can provide each of you so that it's easy for you to become a participant in the dialogue about the future of health care. Over the next several months, in each of the communities you represent, campaigns will be in those communities, town hall meetings, many forums will convene that really require the PA voice to be present and participate, and we want to help you do that. We want your voice to be present. In conclusion, I want to note that our profession, the academy, and our nation's health care system all face challenges and opportunities. I urge you, I invite, I request, I really plead with you to be participants in embracing change as opportunity. I look forward to working with you and meeting many of you over the next several days. Thank you. Now, once again, it's my real pleasure and privilege to bring back to the stage Gregor Bennett, who will present the 2008 AAPA President's Award. Gregor? Great job, Bill. From time to time, we have the opportunity to present the AAPA President's Award this year. We're honoring an individual who's made outstanding contributions to the PA profession with the AAPA President's Award. Today, I have the privilege of introducing a man who's been an ally of PA since the earliest days of the profession. He was one of the profession's first advocates in the U.S. Congress. He was a key player in legislation that helped the profession to make the leap into mainstream medicine. Paul Rogers served for 24 years as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from the 11th District of Florida. Of those 24 years, he spent eight years as chair of the House Subcommittee on Health and the Environment and became nationally recognized as a bold and innovative leader. His prolific record in advancing health care earned him the sobriquet of Mr. Health. Since the passage of the National Cancer Act, which he introduced in 1971 and was reauthorized in 1977, the childhood death rate from cancer has dropped by more than 70%. 
Communities as distinct as Anchorage and Miami are the beneficiaries of the Safe Drinking Water Act, which Paul introduced in 1974. The Health Manpower Training Act, which he conceptualized and became law in 1971, led to a dramatic rise in opportunities of young adults to become physician, assistants, physician assistants. Gee, I can't even say her own name. <laughs> Dentists, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, scientists. Other legislation that Paul sponsored and played a major role in enacting includes the Migrant Health Act of 1962, the Comprehensive Drug Abuse Prevention Control Act of 1970, the Heart, Lung, and Blood Act of 1972, the National Sickle Cell Anemia Control Act of 1972, the Emergency Medical Services Act of 1973, the National Diabetes Mellitus Research and Education Act of 1974, the National Research Act of 1974, the Community Centers Act of 1975. Community Health Centers Act, the National Health Dis Promotion and Disease Prevention Act of 1976. Quite an accomplishment. As chair of the Board of Research America, his vision leadership played a significant role in doubling the budget of the National Institutes of Health over five years. By an act of Congress, the main plaza at the National Institutes of Health was dedicated as the Paul G. Rogers Plaza. Elected to the Institute of Medicine in 1979, he serves as chair of the Roundtable on Environmental Health, Environmental Health Science and Research. In 2006, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation supported the launch of the Paul G. Rogers Society for Global Health Research. The society is administered by Research America. Paul is a partner in the law firm of Hogan and Hartson in Washington, D.C. He and his wife, Becky, are proud parents of a daughter, Lang, and the proud grandparents of four beautiful grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the recipient of the 2008 AMA President's, or APA President's Award, the Honorable Paul G. Rogers. Well, it's truly a privilege for me to join you this morning as you mark the opening of your 36th conference. Think of that, 36th time. That's wonderful. And I want to thank your distinguished president, Gregor Bennett, for that very kind and thorough introduction. <laughs> Everything I've ever done in my life, I think. That was kind of you, Gregor. Uh, You've got great officers, you know that, and they're doing a wonderful job for you. Uh, I uh, also wanted to thank Gregor and the entire board for allowing me to have this very high honor that he has and the board has bestowed upon me. Uh, may I say, too, a word about your new CEO? And I speak from experience. He uh, is outstanding. You're very fortunate to have him join your leadership team. He has great contacts, great knowledge, great ideas. He's an activist, and he'll bring action to the PA movement. 